Ladies, gentlemen, students, and teachers, and parents, and organizers. If you don't see it, there's another organizer over there. I'd like to ask you a favor. Could you put your hands on your chest and really feel your heartbeat? Are you alive? No, it's not the question I want to ask. I have a question. Do you know how many times your heart can beat in your lifetime? Some people still feeling the heartbeat. Does anyone know? Yes. On average, a heart can beat two billion times. And it's the same for every type of mammal. What we'll decides our lifespan is the speed of your heartbeat? For example, let's take mice and elephant. They have the same number of heartbeats, but mice only can live three years. But elephant can live more than 70 years because their heart beats much more slowly than mice's. Of course, not everyone was given, has given the same number of heartbeats. Thanks to development of medical technology and improvement of living standard and the environment, our life expectancy is getting longer and longer. Mine is 91, because I'm Japanese. <laughs> However, my point is, whatever, how, whatever what you do, no matter what you do, no matter how medical development, medical technology develops, our life clock is always ticking. Today, I'm here to share my philosophy. How I want to live. How I want to use my time given. And how I want to use my life. There are many people in my life who guided me who inspired me and also helped me to build who I am today. One of the person, one of the people whom I often recall when I think of meaning of life is my grandfather. Ta -da. If I describe 50 years of his life, I would say, Living at close quarters with death. He was born 1929, and when he was 15, he joined Yokaren, where the Japanese Navy trained kamikaze fighters, kamikaze pilot. As many of you know, a kamikaze attack was a suicidal action that the pilot crashed the air aircraft onto their enemy ship for the Emperor of Japan. There were two things that he learned during the training. How to, aircraft, air, how to pilot the aircraft, of course, and uh, what life meant to him. During the war, dying for the emperor was recognized the most honorable death. And all trainees, including my grandfather, were eager to be a kamikaze pilot. They were so ready to die. Fortunately, the Second World War ended before his departure. 
But experiencing this ideology, ideology and accepting his own death at such a young age made a tremendous impact on his philosophy. Life is more meaningful when it's used for a greater purpose. For him, for him, life was not to live, but to use, to use for someone else, not for himself. Another reason I describe his life as living at close quarters with death is because his job. He was a miner. And the life of miners during his life was like being well paid in exchange, in exchange for their lives. Many workers' lives were taken by gas explosion and the roof falls. Even they survived and made it to the end of their career. Lung disease caused by inhaling coal dust were waiting for them. My grandfather knew all risks, but he chose this job to support his family. As a firstborn son, he had the huge responsibilities. He had to provide for his parents and family, and he had to support schooling for five family members, including three his younger siblings and two daughters. My mother told me this story. As far as I remember, your grandfather came back home drunk most of the night. He would come to my room and uh, give a kiss to my whole forehead. In Japanese traditional culture, especially for his generation, it was uncommon for parents to give a kiss to their own child. Coming home meant so much to him because he never knew if he would come back on that day. He was a minor for about 30 years. But he wasn't afraid to putting himself in such a risk because of this belief. Life is not to live, but to use. To use for a greater purpose. Not for himself. However, he changed after his retirement. For the first time in his life, he started doing something for himself. Swimming, Golf, skiing, Japanese chef, chess, calligraphy, haiku, so much more. When I was younger, I didn't quite understand why he, came, why he kept himself so busy every day. Why he couldn't just chill out like my friend's grandfather's. But now, I see it differently. That was something he had been missing all his life. He couldn't even go to high school, get a chance to explore himself through learning. For the first time in his life, he had the pleasure of learning something new. For the first time in his life, he had the happiness of developing himself through learning 
in challenging something new. I must say, his belief was heavily affected by Japanese collectivism. However, later in his life, he learned how to value himself as an individual and how to love himself. There were two things my grandfather taught me. Firstly, my time is my life. We, at least I, am privileged to live a country where our safety is secured, assured. I have never had any life threatening event, or I have never been forced to think of my own death due to unavoidable circumstances. I take it granted that I have a tomorrow, and sometimes I forget my life is limited. Sunday morning, I'm so tempted to stay in bed and order some food and Netflix all day. I deserve it. But I tell myself, put your hands on your chest and feel your heart beat. Whatever I do, wherever I go, I am using my life. So I would do better, something, something more meaningful. This is how I discipline myself. Another thing I learned from my grandfather is how to use my life. Like my grandfather experienced, learning and then challenging is a key to happiness in, in life. So I should use my time, my life, to improve myself, to be a better person than who I was yesterday. And of course, I should use my life for others, for community. My grandfather often told me, Kaori, the meaning of your life is only created by yourself. Do something for others so that you will feel more empowered, much braver, and much happier. Try to be a part of people's lives so that you will feel your life is more valuable. And explore yourself through learning and challenging and find what you are truly talented at and passionate about so that you can help others by doing what you love. This is my philosophy. How I want to live, how I want to use my life. And it's a, not just a question for me. It's a question that we all need to ask ourselves. How do you want to use your life? How do we want to live our lives? <laughs>